Okay, today we're gonna to be solving for the unknown. Here is our goal. Our goal, number one goal, get letters on one side of the equation. Usually we put letters on the left, but it doesn't have to be on the left. And then number two goal is to get numbers on the other side. And then the third step is we're going to check, okay? So we're gonna be looking at 9C number five. So here we have a plus 52. You cannot add letters to numbers. You can only add letters to letters. You only add A's to A's, B's to B's. I like to say apples to apples, bananas to bananas, X's to X's, numbers to numbers. So if I want letters on one side, let's say I want to leave this letter here because I want to keep them on the left side of the equal sign and I want numbers on the right hand side. That means I don't want this number here. So how do I get rid of that number? It is a positive 52, so to get rid of it, I have to subtract it away. I have to do the opposite of what's being done. Right now, it's being added. The opposite of adding is subtracting. So I subtract 52 to get it to go away there. Well, this is like the equal sign is I'm, like I'm balancing a seesaw right around the equal sign, okay? I wanna balance the seesaw. So if I subtract 52 from here, I have to subtract 52 from here. It's like, if I take away 52 rocks on one side of the seesaw, I have to take away 52 rocks on the other side of the seesaw, okay? So, uh, now to balance it, we subtract everything, okay? We still have this A, because that's like zero here, adding a zero, so I still have A. Those cancel each other out, okay? And then I have my equal sign, and then do your 100 minus 52, should be 48, so, and basically you have A equals 48, okay? I'm just gonna scoot that over. A equals 48, that is my answer. The next step to do is to check it. So, when we check it, I recommend rewriting the original equation. So, this is 9C number six. When you check it, I recommend rewriting your original equation. We said, a is 48. So I take my answer and then everywhere I see an A, I replace it with 48. If A is 48, instead of writing A, I write 48 plus 52 equals 100. If you had your right solution, if this, if A really is 48, then the left side of the equals, the left side of the equation will equal the right side. Well, 48 plus 52 is 100 and the left side equals the right side, and I usually just say check, it checks. If this does not check, either you got the wrong solution for A, or you did your arithmetic wrong in your checking. All right, let's look at 9C number three, same thing. Our goal is to get letters on one side and numbers on the other side, and I usually get letters on the left-hand side. So if I want letters on the left-hand side, it means I want my numbers on the right, that means I want that to go away because I don't want numbers on the left-hand side. Well, if I want that to go away, it's being subtracted. It's a negative seven. So what's the opposite of negative? A positive, or the opposite of subtraction, addition. So I have to do the opposite. I have to add seven for that to go away. Whatever I do to one side of the equal sign, I have to do to the other side of the equal sign, and I write it right under my numbers. So now, I'm pretty much adding everything. I didn't do anything to this X, so it gets brought down. A negative seven and a positive seven. If I have seven and then I owe seven, I have no money, so those cancel. Then there's my equal sign. Then a positive seven and a negative three. If I have seven and I owe three, then I end up having four. So X equals four for that one. Then when you go to check it, 9C number four, I recommend rewriting your original equation to check it. When you're checking it, we said X is four. X is four, so take your four and everywhere you see an X, you replace it with four. So instead of writing my X, I'm writing my four minus seven equals negative three. This means you have four, that's a positive four. When there's no sign, that's an implied positive. You have four, you're in debt seven, or you owe seven. So if you have four and you owe seven, 
you're still going to owe money. You're going to owe three, which that is what the right side equals. So the left side equals the right side. That's a good thing. That's what we want, and it checks. Okay, now we're looking at 9C13. Let's apply solving the unknown to word problems. In 20 years, Fritha will be 52. How old is she now? Well, we're looking for how old is she now, so we have to assign a variable for how old is she now. So let's just use F for Fritha, and that's gonna represent how old is she now. Well, in 20 years, so if we're going 20 years into the future, means we have to add 20 years. If this is what she is now, then in 20 years means add 20. And then the problem tells us in 20 years she will be, will be is our equal sign, and that she will be 52. So this is what we had earlier. We wanna get letters on the left and numbers on the right, which means we don't want that right there. Well, if it's a positive 20, how do we get rid of it? We do the opposite of adding, which is subtracting, because that will make that 20 go away. Whatever we do to the left side of the equation, we have to do to the right side of the equation to make it balance. So now we're adding everything up. A positive 20 and a negative 20 cancel and equal zero. So over here, we still have our F, and then we have our equal sign. Then we have our 52 minus 20 would be 32. So she is 32 years. When it's a word problem, I am really big into what does that number represent? That represents years. That's how old she is. Because it doesn't mean 32 months, 32 days. It means 32 years. Okay? So now we check it. Uh, no, we don't have to check that one. So, okay. Let's go to 9E number 1. What if we have letters and numbers both on both sides of the equal sign? Okay, so um, here you have a 7x plus 10. You cannot add x's to numbers. You can only add x's to x's and numbers to numbers. You can only add apples to apples and bananas to bananas, x's to x's and numbers to numbers. Our goal is to get letters on the left-hand side which means I don't want this here because it's on the right-hand side. I normally do my uh, letters first. It doesn't matter if you work with letters first or numbers first, either way. So I'm just gonna start with my letters. So if I want letters on the left, means I don't want this here. This is an implied positive. When there's no sign, that's an implied positive. So to get it to go away, I need to do the opposite of positive or opposite of addition, which is subtraction. I mean, just subtract it away. So whatever I do to this side, I have to do to the other side of the equal sign, and I'm gonna write it here. I'm gonna write it under my X's, so I add my X's to my X's, okay? So over here, a positive 6X and a negative 6X cancel and equal zero. It's like having, I have six cookies, I subtract six cookies, I have zero cookies, okay? So, now I can add these X's. If I have seven X minus six X, it's like, again, saying seven cookies minus six cookies is one cookie or one X. I didn't do anything to that 10, so I keep it in my equation. Then there's my equal sign. That is zero. I don't have to write zero, but I'm just showing you what happens when you write zero. Zero plus four is just four. So I don't have to write that zero there. So now my equation is 1x plus 10 equals 4, which looks like what we had earlier. And I need to get my numbers all together on one side, and normally we're trying to get our numbers on the right-hand side, which means I need to get rid of that. Well, how do I get that to go away? It's a positive 10 right now, or I'm adding 10. I have to do the opposite of adding, which is subtracting. If I subtract 10 from one side of the equal sign, I have to do it to the other side. Now I add everything up. I still have my one X there. I didn't do anything with that one. My positive 10 and negative 10 go away, equals zero. Now I've got my equal sign over here. That's an implied positive. So I owe 10, someone gives me four. If I owe 10 and someone gives me four dollars, I still owe money. I would still owe six. So watch your signs, a negative 10 plus four, negative six. Okay, 
So how do we check these? I go on it to 9E2, checking it. I always recommend rewriting your original equation. Here was my original equation. So we said x equals negative six. X is negative six. So everywhere I see an x, I'm going to replace it with a negative six, okay? When you see a number next to a letter, seven x, that implies multiplication. Seven x is multiply. That means seven times x. So when we go to check it, we say seven, and I use parentheses to show multiplication, seven times, everywhere I see an x, I'm putting negative six. Plus my 10 equals six x means six times x. Six times my negative six, because instead of writing my x, I'm writing negative six. And again, I like to use parentheses to show multiplication. The reason is, is because if you now say six times negative six, this gets confusing because now your multiplication symbol looks like X's that we are working with. When you start working with pre-algebra and algebra using X's, I stop using the multiplication symbol and I use parentheses instead. There, there's no confusion between the multiplication sign and the X's. Okay, here we have to do multiplication first. So seven times a negative six, a positive times a negative is a negative, and then seven times six is 42. Now plus my 10 equals positive six times negative six. A positive times a negative is a negative. Six times six, 36 plus four. I'm in debt 42, I, someone gives me 10. So I would still be in debt 32, I'm in debt 36, or I owe 36, and someone gives me four, then I would still be owing a negative 32, or I would still owe 32, negative 32. So watch your signs, and the left side equals the right side, so it checks. All right, let's move down to, to 9E3. Same thing, we have letters and numbers on one side, Letters and numbers on one side. I cannot add F's to whole numbers. I can only add F's to F's and numbers to numbers. So my goal is to get letters on one side and numbers on the other side. So I'm gonna get letters on the left-hand side, which means I don't want letters on the right-hand side, means I have to get rid of this one. How do I get rid of it? I have to do the opposite of what's being done. Right now it's being subtracted or a negative, so the opposite of subtracting or negative is adding or a positive. Whatever I do to one side of the equal sign, I have to do to the other side of the equal sign. Makes that seesaw balance. Now we're adding everything up. A positive 2F and a negative, that's a negative one. Okay, in front of there, that's an implied negative one. So if I have two and then I owe one, I still have a positive one left. I didn't do anything with that, so keep writing that in your equation. And then your equal sign, a negative two and a positive two F, those cancel each other out, equals zero. And then I still have to bring down my positive one. You don't have to write the positive sign. Anytime there's no sign, it's implied positive. Okay, I'm not done. I'm still trying to get my letters all by itself. And then my numbers on the right hand side, which means I want that to go away because I want my numbers all over here. How do I get this to go away? I do the opposite of what's being done. It is a negative six now. So the opposite of subtracting or negative is a positive or adding six. Whatever I do to the one side of the equal sign, I do to the other side of the equal sign. Now I add it all up. I didn't do anything to my one F, so it's still there. My negative six and positive six equals zero, so it goes away and cancels. There's my equal sign. Then a positive six and a positive one, positive seven. So one F or F equals seven. Now we check it. What do I recommend when we check it? Always rewrite your equation. So we had a negative F, which that's an implied negative one, minus six equals negative two F, plus one. Well, what did we say F was? We said F is a positive seven. So everywhere I see an F, I'm going to replace it with my seven. 
and negative 1f means negative 1 times f. So that'd be negative 1 times, and then f is 7, so I'll replace with my 7, minus 6 equals negative 2 times my f, and f was 7, plus 1. Do your multiplication first. Negative 1 times 7, a negative times a positive is a negative, and 7 times 1 is 7, minus 6 equals a negative times a positive is a negative, and 2 times 7 is 14, plus 1. Now, this means you owe and you owe more. You're in debt and you're more in debt. You owe 7 and now you owe 6 more, which means you owe 13. You add those numbers together. They're the same sign, you add them together. A negative 6 and a negative 7 is negative 13. You owe 14, somebody gives you 1, you have 1, so you still owe, you owe 13. When your signs are different, you're subtracting the two numbers. The left side equals the right side, so it checks out, so all is good. Okay, we're looking at 9C18, taking the solving for the unknowns into a word problem. At the beginning of the summer, two vines were the same length, okay? That's some key words. Two vines were the same length at the beginning. What does that mean? That means that we had one vine and it was equal to another vine, vine one and vine two, the length of those were the same, okay? So at the end of the problem, it's gonna ask how long were each of the vines at the beginning, so we need to assign a variable, and let's just use L for how long they were, okay? So at the beginning of summer, this vine length was equal to that vine length, and we're basically gonna be trying to find what that L is, okay? so. Now going back to the problem, during the growing season, one vine tripled its length. Tripled its length. What does it mean when something was tripled? That means it was three times the amount. So it was three times as long. How do we write three times as long? Three L, that means three times as long. Then the problem says it grew an additional one foot. Additional. So that's another keyword, additional one foot. So it tripled its length, three times L, then it grew plus one more feet. Now remember, that's vine one, and we said it was going to be equal to vine two. So now we can put equal. So now let's find out about vine two, okay? Vine two says the other vine doubled its length. When you double something, what does that mean? It means you have two times the amount. So if it was two times as long, two times L, two L. A number next to a letter means multiplication, two times L. Then the problem says, then it grew an additional six feet. So additional means add. It doubled its length, two times its length, plus six more feet, okay? And then it says, at the end of the summer, the vines were still the same length, which means this is why we can set them equal to each other, okay? Now we're saying, how long were they at the beginning of the summer? That's what L represented. How long were they at the beginning of the summer? So now we're just solving for L. Get letters on the left-hand side, numbers on the right-hand side. I don't want this here. It's a positive, implied positive means I have to subtract it to get it to go away. Whatever you do to one side of the equation, you do to the other. I'm gonna write L's over L's, L's to L's. I can only add L's to L's and numbers to numbers. So three L minus two L. Three cookies minus two cookies, one cookie, one L. Here's my plus one equals a positive two and a negative two equals zero. And then I still have my positive six and you don't have to write the a positive when there's no sign, it's implied positive. So now I need to get numbers on my right hand side, which means I want this to go away. It's being added, so I'll do the opposite, which is subtracting it. Whatever I do to one side of the equal sign, I have to do to the other side to make it balance. Okay, so I didn't do anything to my one L, so I still have my one L. My positive one, my negative one cancel and be zero. Positive six, negative one. You have six, you give away one, you have five. What does that represent? This is a word problem, so it's really important to say what does that number represent? 
Our L represented how long it was. How long? Are we dealing with inches, feet, centimeters, meters? Whatever, put your units, that's really important. So now this says that our vine was five feet. Both of them were five feet at the beginning of the summer.